if you have a concept of what living is all about, what the universe is all about, you try to put it into words that will lead you to the truth. Because what any person who is anti-justice will do is first of all try to stay away from what the truth of the matter is. The truth is you have a system of white supremacy in place. What you want to do or should want to do is replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. Compensatory definition of justice is as follows. Guaranteeing that no person is mistreated. That's part one. Part two, guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most help for truth and justice. The only reason I'm talking, not to make anybody feel bad, not even to make white people feel bad. I'm talking because the goal of replacing white supremacy with justice on this planet is what I think ought to be happening. And this is what I think all of us should be interested in. Can you show me the doll that looks bad? Okay. Well, how did you feel seeing that doll test? You know, the thing that struck me the most is, was how quickly the kids answered the question. They said, uh, you no, know, this one is the nicest because she's white. There was no ambiguity. There was no, let me think about it. Or, you know, this one, you know, you know, for whatever those reasons were. And I'm like, you know, my goodness, how, the, what about the filter? You, you, at all of the images, everything Isn't that's that coming interesting in. how not even a second. No. Yeah. No, it was immediately, you and know. Why do you think that is? Wow. And, and I guess it goes back to the images, you know, when we're, we're looking at what's on television, we've been looking at commercials, we're looking at advertisement, and, you know, with certain dolls in particular, because yeah. um, I think about my eight-year-old, you know, we advertise usually the, the white doll. It was associated with the color white, yes. the society, power. I want you to buy 20,000 shares of Blue Star at 15 and an eighth, three-eighths tops. Attractiveness. Black children watch more TV, unfortunately, than any other minority group. And they're bombarded, therefore, with all these fast-paced images, which, for the most part, leaves them invisible. They don't see themselves, and they're not even aware of it. Maxie's got the best hair. Which is the pretty girl? The one on the right, most likely. The one on the right, most likely. And yeah. why would you say that? Well, to me, she has the prettiest hair. If you live in a world as we do, where you turn on the television and you see a, a TV show and, the, and the, the crack dealer's always a black guy and the judge is always a white person and... Or if know, the only time you ever see a black man is on the evening news and he's being arrested. He's being arrested. Yeah. Those, those images start to matter. They start to, comp they start to change the way the software in your head works. And that's regardless of what race you are, regardless of what race you are. So, I mean, as a my mother, who is black, sees the same images in the world, positive images of white people and negative images of black people as a white person does. Mm -hmm. She can't escape that reality. To what extent do you think white people have been able to create the illusion of being all powerful? Oh, they've done an excellent job of doing that. Everything from the religion down to the cartoons, <laughs> and I'll give you an example. In the religion, of course, we go into church and we see God as a white man. Blonde hair, blue eyes, his mama is white, his daddy is white, God's angels are white, everybody at the Last Supper is white, nobody black even is serving the roles when you come to God and those things that identify God. That we grow up looking at our religious scriptures thinking white people. So not only have they created the illusion that they are all powerful like God, They've done even worse than that. even in the cartoon. They've taken the, the mythology out of Egyptian civilization. Excuse me, Nile Valley civilization, like Isis, for an example. The, the, the ancient uh, 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 deities, the ancient god-like figures in ancient uh, uh, Nile Valley civilization, and made them white. So Isis did as a white lady. And she came out of Africa in the cartoons I'm talking about. So even four and five year olds are learning the concept of being socialized into the thinking that white people are all powerful. They do everything. And I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. So what it says is the way that we 
express ourselves mm -hmm. on that unconscious level is a function of the world in which we live and yeah. the worlds that we have constructed yeah. for ourselves. So it's about when you think of the word uh, uh, entrepreneur, do you think of female or do you think of male? When you think of a black male, what do you think? Do you think good? Do you think evil? The television is a major educational and programming device within the system of racism and white supremacy. What is it teaching? Go home, turn on your television, and flip through the channels. How many white images do you see? See, monitor the image, and then put another dot, is the person speaking intelligently? and see what we come up with for ourselves. It is programming, systematic programming about how we are supposed to perform and how we are supposed to see ourselves for the benefit of the system of white supremacy, for the maintenance of the power equation of white over non-white. Even unconscious racial biases may affect your behavior. But when it comes to the potent question of race, our subconscious is making decisions every day. Decisions that in real time, in real life, have real consequences. This may look like a computer game, but it's not. It's actually a test that's designed to measure how people react to different scenarios. They have an opportunity to play the role of a police officer who had to make rapid decisions as to whether to fire at someone who was holding a gun. Uh, or not. And what we were most interested in is what happened when they were confronted by a person, white or black, who was holding a harmless object. Anthony Greenwald and his colleagues reported in the Journal of Experimental Social Psychology that black people holding harmless objects were shot more often than whites. The difference was about 35 percent of blacks being uh, mistakenly shot compared to only 26 percent of whites. Greenwald blames that on something he suspects people may do without even realizing it, make automatic stereotypes. We think people have these automatic stereotypes, they can influence behavior when people have to act in a hurry and produce unfortunate, uh, tragic results. Um, in a significant respect, who we are is a function of the world that we create for ourselves. Right? If this unconscious side of us is reflecting our experiences, then if we choose different experiences, then that unconscious side of us changes as well. If you want to have a positive association between goodness and African Americans, then you must surround yourself or put yourself in environments where those kinds of experiences and associations mm -hmm. happen and are possible. Yes. And, and, and that's why images are so important, you know? What you see about a certain race or a certain group of people all the time affects how you feel about that group of people. It really, really does. See, the brain is most of what we focus on, you know, at the conscious level, that's just 10%. The brain is doing calculations all beneath that at the symbolic level. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, uh, again use uh, a, a phrase that I, I get an opportunity to use every morning on my show. And, and I remind people, in America, we are culturally conditioned to believe that white people are superior and black people are inferior. And the manifestation of that cultural conditioning is that too often black people are undervalued, underestimated, and marginalized. We have been culturally conditioned to undervalue, underestimate, and marginalize ourselves. And white America certainly has a distinct advantage in making sure that every aspect of this culture, not only in the United States, but actually throughout, the, all over the globe, that we are undervalued, underestimated, and marginalized. 
The problem is really in the environment generally. When people leave the test, leave our experiment, they come back to the world that Malcolm described in which white is dominant and most of the images you see are not like those whites. I repeat after me, reading is more important than watching TV. Let's say it again, reading is more important than watching TV. So what I'm hoping is that today offers some kind of an enlightenment, insight about how the images that we expose ourselves to and the relationships we choose, as Malcolm just said, have a powerful impact on who we really are. What you watch on television or allow your children to watch matters. 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 matters.